Have you ever considered a carnivore diet? If yes, then you've landed on the right video. A carnivore diet is an intriguing shift from the conventional dietary norms, where one's daily nutrition is sourced predominantly from animal products. This means your plates are filled with meats, fish, and other animal foods, while fruits, vegetables, and grains take a back seat. Many people are drawn to this diet due to its potential benefits such as weight loss, improved mental clarity, and even enhanced athletic performance. But like any dietary change, it requires careful planning and informed choices. In this video, we'll walk you through the ins and outs of a carnivore diet, sharing essential tips on how to start and manage it effectively. Now, let's dive into the details of the carnivore diet. Firstly, it's essential to understand the difference between grass-finished and grain-finished beef. Now, you might wonder, why does it matter? Well, let's break it down. Grass-finished and grain-finished beef, they're not just names, they indicate how the cattle were raised and fed. Grass-finished means the cattle were raised on a diet of just grass and forage throughout their lives. On the other hand, grain-finished cattle are typically raised on grass and forage, but their diet is supplemented with grain, usually in the later stages of their lives. These differences in diet can impact the nutritional profile of the beef. According to a study from South Korea conducted in 2022, grass-finished beef tends to have lower total fat and slightly higher omega-3. This might sound great for those of you who are health conscious, but hold your horses. Grain-finished beef is not a nutritional slouch either, it's found to have more monounsaturated fat which is known to help prevent cardiovascular disease. And here's a twist. In some regions like Han Wu, grain-finished beef even had higher levels of EPA and DHA, two types of omega-3, than grass-finished beef. So the nutritional differences aren't as clear-cut as one might initially think. Now let's talk about taste. Many people prefer the texture and flavor of grain-finished beef because it's typically tenderer and fattier, but again this is subjective and depends on individual preference. So, what's the bottom line here? Well, when it comes to choosing between grass-finished and grain-finished beef, there isn't a definitive better choice from a health standpoint. It's about understanding the differences, weighing the pros and cons, and making a decision that aligns with your dietary preferences and budget. Whether you choose grass-finished or grain-finished beef, it's about what works best for you and your budget. After all, the goal is to enjoy your food while staying healthy, right? Next up, let's debunk the myth about the importance of organ meats in a carnivore diet. Organ meats, often referred to as offal, are the internal organs of animals, such as liver, heart, and kidneys, among others. They have been a part of human diets for centuries, with some cultures considering them a delicacy. In recent times, organ meats have been touted as superfoods in the carnivore diet community and for good reason. They're packed with a wealth of nutrients, including iron, zinc, vitamin A, vitamin B12, and folate, to name a few. However, the question remains, are organ meats essential in a carnivore diet? Well, the answer isn't as straightforward as you might think. A 2019 study published in the Journal of Animals found that while organ meats are indeed higher in trace elements, their protein content is similar to that of regular meats and they have lower fat content. This suggests that while organ meats are nutrient-dense, they don't necessarily offer a significant advantage over regular meat when it comes to protein content. But what about their taste? Some people relish the distinct flavors of organ meats, while others find them less palatable. If you fall into the latter category, don't fret. It's entirely possible to thrive on a carnivore diet without incorporating organ meats. The key is to ensure you're getting a variety of meats to cover your nutrient needs. For example, beef is a great source of protein and iron, chicken provides a good amount of vitamin B12, and fish is rich in omega-3 fatty acids. In conclusion, organ meats can be a valuable addition to a carnivore diet due to their high nutrient content. However, they are by no means a necessity. If you enjoy their distinct flavors and textures, incorporate them into your meals. If not, you can still meet your nutritional needs with a variety of other meats. So if you enjoy organ meats, great, but if you don't, you can still thrive on a carnivore diet without them. Hydration and electrolytes are critical on a carnivore diet. This statement underscores a fundamental truth about our body's needs, regardless of the dietary path we tread. The carnivore diet in particular can lead to a metabolic state known as ketosis. This is where the body, in absence of sufficient carbohydrates, begins to burn fat for energy. When you enter ketosis, your body flushes out water and sodium at a higher rate than normal. This is because the lack of insulin, 
a hormone that helps regulate blood sugar levels, causes the kidneys to release excess sodium. This process can lead to dehydration and an imbalance of electrolytes, which are essential minerals such as sodium, potassium, and magnesium that carry an electric charge. These electrolytes play a vital role in various bodily functions, including maintaining fluid balance, nerve conduction, and muscle contraction. So, how can you ensure adequate hydration and electrolyte balance on a carnivore diet? Here's where the magic of salt and electrolyte-infused water comes into play. Salt is a natural, nutrient-dense source of sodium, one of the key electrolytes your body needs. Adding a little extra salt to your meals can help replenish the sodium loss through increased urination during ketosis. This can be as simple as sprinkling a pinch of salt over your steak, or adding a dash to your bone broth. Drinking plenty of water is of course essential for hydration, but when it comes to maintaining electrolyte balance not all water is created equal. Water infused with electrolytes, often available in ready-to-drink bottles or as packets you can mix into your water, can provide a much-needed boost of essential minerals. Keep in mind that while hydration is crucial, it's important not to overdo it. Drinking excessive amounts of water can actually lead to a condition known as hyponatremia or water intoxication, where the sodium levels in your body become dangerously low. Navigating the carnivore diet can indeed be an adventure, filled with new experiences and learning. As you embark on this journey, hydration and electrolytes are not mere footnotes, but essential chapters in your carnivore diet book. Adding salt to your meals and drinking water with electrolytes can help maintain your health while on a carnivore diet. Another aspect to consider is your fat intake and ensuring you're eating enough. Now let's delve into the subject of fat consumption. On a carnivore diet, it's important to be careful with how much fat is consumed, especially in the early stages. You see, if you eat too much fat too quickly it can lead to some unpleasant digestive issues such as bloating and diarrhea. It's a common hurdle that many people encounter when transitioning to this diet. But don't worry, your body will adapt over time. The key is to start slow and listen to your body, adjusting your fat intake as needed. But why is this? Well, consuming a high-fat diet requires a different set of digestive enzymes than a diet rich in carbohydrates. Your body needs time to ramp up the production of these enzymes, so if you start off by eating too much fat, your body may struggle to digest it all leading to those digestive issues I mentioned earlier. Now you might be wondering, how do I avoid this? The answer is pretty simple. Start by gradually increasing your fat intake over a few weeks. This gives your body time to adjust and ramp up the necessary enzymes. It's a gentle approach that can help make the transition to a carnivore diet smoother and more comfortable. Now, let's shift gears and talk about the importance of eating enough. This might seem counterintuitive, especially if you're focused on weight loss, but under eating on a carnivore diet can lead to cravings, which can potentially derail your diet. It's crucial to remember that this diet isn't just about weight loss. It's about nourishing your body with nutrient-dense foods. You see, when you're eating enough meat and fat, you'll feel satiated. This can help to keep cravings at bay and keep you on track with your diet. So, be sure to eat enough to stay satisfied. Your focus should be on avoiding processed carbs and sugars, not limiting your food intake. Make sure you're getting enough meat and fat to stay satisfied and avoid processed carbs and sugars. These five tips should make your journey into the carnivore diet smoother. This journey is unique for everyone and we'd love to hear about your experiences. Did you face any challenges when starting the carnivore diet? How did you overcome them? Each of us has a story to share and there's so much we can learn from each other. Before you go, remember to hit that like button if you found this video helpful. And don't forget to subscribe to stay updated on more tips and insights. As always, your support fuels our work. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for more tips and insights.